Who's a pirate fan? Huh, 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 huh. It's okay, it's okay, it's okay, it's fine. It's fine. Okay. Okay. What's up, pirate fam? Today's video is going to show you guys where there's an excellent intersection between a real world, useful, old world survival skill as well as another storytelling technique, a fantastic mnemonic device that has been used across history by multiple cultures in order to keep track of a story. We'll call it a story rope, or you can call it a story ball, or a few other things. But before we move on and continue on our little story here, let's head outside and take a look at where we're going to start. All right, guys, so what we're going to do here is take a natural material and turn it into a textile. And a textile is basically just anything that is a natural material turned into a usable good. We're going to turn this yucca rope, this yucca plant here, into cordage or rope. Now, the rope then becomes a mnemonic device for us to utilize to remember things. And that's what a mnemonic device is. It's a tool for memory. Now, this particular type of mnemonic device was used historically for many different cultures across the globe. The Yakima people here in the Yakima region, women would typically weave dog's bane into a rope and weave beads into the ropes to mark significant meaningful occasions across their life. The Navajo to in southwestern, um, the southwestern United States would use the yucca, which is where this plant is indigenous to, and they would weave things called counting ropes. And it's quite probable that that counting rope tradition actually extended upward from the Inca and possibly the Mayas as well as humanity crossed the continents back and forth over time. Because when the Spaniards arrived in South America, they discovered that the Incas had a pretty ingenious mathematic and record keeping system using ropes where they would tie knots and create essentially a decimal system. And so what we'll do here is take this material, turn it into a rope, and then we'll tie knots into it in order to keep track of a history, to keep track of a story. This is kind of like journaling for people that don't know how to read or write or don't want to, kind of up to you. So what I'm gonna start off here is gather my handy dandy pocket knife and I'm just going to harvest a couple of leaves off of this yucca plant. Now what I want to make sure any of you guys out there attempting to do this don't do is just go running around a neighborhood or your yard just cutting a ton of leaves off of a yucca plant because these are living entities, right? And you want to make sure that they are able to sustain their own life. Um, so I'm just going to come down low. I'm only going to grab a couple for the sake of showing off how to do it. Maybe I'll grab three here, three nice long ones and then we'll turn these into a rope. Other materials you can use, not just dog's bane, but also locally found in the area, you could find stingy nettle. Yes, I know that stingy nettle often looks like marijuana, and interesting fact enough, they are related to each other in a similar family tree. Another plant you can use is uh, milkweed. Make sure if you're using milkweed though, uh, monarch butterflies use milkweed to lay eggs and hatch caterpillars so if you wait until the fall season or later on closer to winter after they've kind of died and dried it out a bit you're still able to gather and harvest the fibers out of the plant to use for making rope we're trying to be uh, sustainable participants in an ecosystem here and not just those that kind of ravage it and take it for what we want that's why we only take a little bit at a time only what we need so let's head into the table and I'll show you how to pull the fibers out of this and then weave it into a rope. All right, so the first thing I need to do here is actually take off this coating. But you can see I got these strings coming off here. These are the fibers that we're going to free from the plant to use for our own devices. I need to scrape off this outer layer. These yucca have a waxy coating on the outside as well as... Um, the, the layer of the plant that holds all the photo uh, sensitive cells or the, uh, the chloroform and chloroplast and all that jazz. So I'm going to take my knife here and you don't necessarily have to use a knife. I mean if you're harvesting off of a plant you're perfectly capable of using scissors or um, pulling them off in your own way and to scrape them again you don't necessarily need a knife. You can use the edge of a spoon, a gardening trowel, you can use a, a putty knife, whatever has a 
sh rough or sharp enough edge to scrape will do the trick for you. So I'm just gonna start going like this and as I do this, I can hear the knife nerds out there freaking out like, how dare you do this to the edge of your knife? Well, sometimes you just gotta do what you gotta do. And I know I just mentioned that there's plenty of other tools I could have used. And in a more dire situation, that's maybe exactly what I would do to preserve my knife edge. But also one of the things I know is Victorinox steels, the Swiss Army knife steels, are particularly soft and easy to resharpen. So having the tools to resharpen my knife, I'm not overly concerned about that at this point. What I do want to make sure that I am being cognizant of though, or aware of, is not to push too hard or scrape too intensely because I don't want to sever or cut the fibers that are in there before I have the chance to weave them into my cordage. As I get down here at the bottom, one of the challenges I'm going to face, because you can see down here at the bottom it's a whole lot thicker, those fibers get more densely packed and tightly connected to each other, and so a lot of the base of this may not, may not, doesn't mean it will be, but it may not be as useful to me as I would like it to be. So I'm not going to kill myself and scrape all the way down to the bottom. Um, again, if I were far more concerned with, oh, see, there I went and cut it, with the resource, maybe that's something I'd be a little more cognizant of, but at this point, I am using this as a teaching tool. Then I'll flip it over and do it on the other side, and here's where you start to run into more danger of cutting the fibers, because there's no longer that protective layer on the other side of the leaf to kind of help hold things together. You're scraping away that last little bit. But you can see how thin it's starting to get as I go through with this. Keep wiping off the blade here. Um, it's pretty fascinating too, these, these counting systems and storytelling systems. There's evidence that ancient Chinese people would use ropes as a mean ropes and knots as a means to keep track of goods and count and and run finances, um, and it's just a fantastic one of those fantastic survival tools because if you need to build a shelter or or fishing line or anything else like that, you're you're able to make rope out of natural materials. A lot of the traditional fishing nets that the indigenous peoples of the United States would use were made out of stingy nettle or the Yakimas again used uh, dog's bane pretty commonly. Um, one of the, maybe in a later video I'll be able to show you how to pull the fibers out of one of those plants because the technique is different. But ultimately if you have a plant of any kind that has good fibers inside of it, um, it is potentially a source for cordage or rope making fibers. Alright, I'm going to keep scraping through these, but I'm just going to speed it up so that we're not all sitting here staring at me doing something for a crazy amount of time. That'll be good enough for what we're going to work on. Okay, so at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and cut this excess off right down here. It's not gonna be useful to me at this point, but again, if you scraped far enough down and you kept going that way, it will be useful, don't cut it off. This is kind of the player's choice for the moment, right? And, and I would recommend being as um, uh, conservative with the resources as possible. But again, what, right now, I'm just uh, using for educational purposes, right? So now I've got these fibers. They're standing there. I'm going to come through and I'm going to start pulling them out and breaking them up like this and laying them off here because this is what I'm going to twist into actual rope. Making them as fine as, as you want. The finer they are, the tighter the weave of your rope and ultimately the stronger it will help it be. Here I go, there I go. I've got a bunch of gunk on my hands, man. It's like I'm changing diapers again or something. Uh, yeah. 
So we're spreading them out. And I've got enough here to get started just to show you guys exactly the technique we're after here. So what I'm going to do is I want to take enough to kind of make it feel a little thicker. So I'll hold these two just like this. And this, if you have to rewind and go back through this repeatedly, please do so. Just because this is this particular technique that we're dealing with here is people find it a little bit tricky to get down. Once you get it though, man, it's money, smooth sailing, and it's a breeze. So what I'm going to do is I, I've got these couple here. Maybe they're a little thick for some of you more experienced and serious folks out there. Um, I've got these these couple of chunks here, and I'm going to fold them over. Now what I want to make sure to do is try to have one end of my fold over. Ah, spinning knife. Watch out. Don't die. Um, sitting out longer than the other, kind of like this. So maybe what I'll do is I'll pull this one down a little bit. There we go. So now I've got one end longer than the other. The reason I want one end longer than the other is I'm going to add more fibers as I go to the, and I want to have some sticking out at the end. So I've got my my loop here. Some uh, one another thing to call this loop when dealing with ropes and cordage is a bite. So I make a bite right here and I've got them basically sitting one on top of the other. And what I'm going to do is I want to take this top one and imagine you're playing, you know, the world's tiniest violin for a sad person that really has no reason to be sad. This is the motion we're after right here. You know, maybe we're looking for the shut your mouth rooster, right? Not a quiet coyote, not a shut the walrus, right? This one right here, tiny violin. I'm going to take them and pushing my forefinger over the top of my thumb away from my body, I'm going to twist it. And you can kind of see how it's, it's twisting there like that. That's what I want. So I get that twist and I roll it and then using my middle finger I reach over the top and I grab the one on the bottom and then I twist it backwards over the top. So this way. And then I repeat. So I'm world's smallest violining away from myself, grabbing and flipping back. Smallest violining, flipping and back. Smallest violining and flipping back towards me over the top smallest violin flipping smallest violin flipping and as I do this now if you're doing this for the first time ever chances are it's gonna look pretty ugly that's okay don't kill yourself uh, don't beat up on yourself one of the other things you want to do too is I started pinching here and you notice my my other hand is inching closer the closer I am pinching towards where those fibers meet the tighter this is gonna be able to be so if I keep letting it stretch out like this I'm going to end up with a, a progressively looser weave. It'll keep getting looser. So I'm flipping, or I'm violining, twisting, or violining, flipping, violining, flipping, going back and forth, violining, flipping. And as I'm moving along, I'm going to start running out of one of the ends of my fibers. Excellent. You know, almost each time I twist, I'm moving my, my left hand pinch a little closer to the meeting spot. So now that I have a smaller bit, and a lot of people will uh, let this get shorter. That's cool. Let it get shorter. Don't. It's up to you. Whatever feels good and whatever works in. I'm going to take a, another couple of fibers. You know, here, here they are. And I'm going to smoosh them in right on top just like that. And I'm going to pinch them in with the rest. And then I'm just going to keep going. So you'll see what I did there. I had the shorter ones taking my new fibers, laying them on top of my shorter ones with a little tail on the end, and I'm just twisting them into the mix. I'm going to keep going like this. Violin, flip. Violin, whoop, I'm getting a little out of hand here. Violin, flip. And every once in a while, go out to the end, stretch, flip them out, because they'll start to tangle over there. Violin, flip. Violin, flip. Violin, flip and as I'm going I'm starting to have a tiny little rope a piece of twine essentially and the more you get the the more you practice this and the better you get at it the faster this will go you're seeing me you're seeing me going super fast right now just because I've made dozens and dozens of feet of this of this kind of uh, cordage not a big deal and so here we have a rope forming. Now I'm gonna weave this out a little farther 
and we'll talk more a bit about telling a story. All right, once I've gotten to that point, look, due to a little uh, Food Network movie magic, I got myself some rope. Now, if you've been doing it, you're going to have a bunch of these ends kind of sticking off. Well, I've got my little multi-tool here, a tiny bit of scissors. Again, you don't have to have a multi-tool to do this. As I mentioned, you don't even necessarily have to have a knife to pull this one off. I'm just cutting off all these ends and cleaning up the rope a little bit just so that there's, you know, an easier, you know, easier surfaces to work with. Snippy snippy. We'll throw in a little more uh, movie magic right now. And when I got to the end, I just sort of tied it off on a, and I left my excess and tied it off on a, a little knot there, just in case I'm of the mind to tie it off and, and create a longer rope. And that's an important thing to be able to do, because remember, the idea is that these are ropes that extend across the expanse of a person's life. That's why the Yakima had these balls, right? So I've got my rope here, and then I come down to the end and starting either now at this moment or whatever moment I so chose as a significant starting point in my life, I would tie a knot into the rope and boom. So here we are, COVID-19 outbreak, right when it starts. Then maybe I tie in another knot for that moment we in the family got chickens or whatever it is for you. You can put in anything there that stands out to you as a significant point in your life. And at this point, it's worth reflecting, I think, on just how labor intensive this was. I mean, I spent a solid, I spent easily nearly an hour going through this entire process. And all I was left with was, you know, this not quite three feet of cordage. And imagine having to have enough of this to tie an entire net. And that's where you get the idea of community involvement and putting things together because a group of people sitting together weaving this cordage enough to make a 10, 20, 30 foot net that is five, six feet high can get a lot farther than just one person. That would take forever. And that's where the stories start coming in. I mean, think about the kind of conversations and exchange of knowledge and history that comes from sitting around with a group of people for hours on end. And it doesn't necessarily mean that each time you're sitting around sharing the stories and the history of, you know, your ancestors or how your grandfather, or grandparents or parents cross the border to have a better life for you. It just means you're connecting with people. And I'm aware most of it's just going to be a bunch of gossip and nonsense, that chisme, you know what I mean? Nady girl, where you been? Nah, guy, no, guy. Oh, I heard she's pregnant. Seriously, you guys are home alone a whole bunch? I suspect what some of you are doing. Use protection. Mm, and then what she told me was, bro, for real, it went like this. At the end of the day, you guys are building community. You're trying to share the connection. And this is a fantastic way to remember your story and tell it for later. This is one. I'll definitely hang up in my classroom when we're all back and hopefully you guys will bring in an excellent piece to share with the class. That'd be phenomenal and interesting. Have a great day guys. Hope you're doing well, staying safe, living strong. Don't get eaten by a bear. We love you and remember whatever you do for this land, you do for everybody.